Hey everyone, this is Ilze B. I am a Latvian and I teach Latvian for English speakers. Yesterday I made a lesson in which I told you about masculine nouns and I demonstrated how masculine nouns can change endings with four male names. Those male names were real people from my family. Interestingly, their names belong each to a different group and those groups, if you remember, are called declensions. So you learned that if a masculine noun in its default form has an ending s, then it belongs to the first declension. And if a masculine noun in its default form has an ending is, then it belongs to the second declension. And if a masculine noun in its default form has an ending us, then it belongs to the third declension. You also learned that a masculine noun can have an ending o, and in that case it doesn't belong to any declension. But why do you need to know to what declension a noun belongs? Well, that would help you to form your own sentences, because the nouns of the same declension will always behave the same way. And what do I mean by behave the same way? Well, nouns in Latvian change their endings a lot at least much more than English nouns change their endings. English nouns basically can have no ending or an ending s. In Latvian it is a little more complicated and that is actually the reason why Latvian is considered to be a difficult language. But if you understand and master these patterns, then I don't think the Latvian will seem that difficult to you. And that is exactly what I like to help you with, because I like teaching people how Latvian words change their endings. Yesterday I also mentioned that Latvian nouns change endings depending on cases. What cases, you might ask? What is a case? Is it a suitcase? Or is it a court case? Now, I think I also mentioned that a case is like a situation. In English, we also sometimes say, put on your thinking hat, like this. Okay, imagine that if you knew that this was my thinking hat, you might pause with your questions because you would know that I am thinking what to say. Similarly, police officers wear their hats and then we know that they have to behave in a certain way because they are at work. So what does it have to do with nouns? Imagine that nouns are people, males and females, and their endings are their hats. And when we observe their endings, we know what situation the noun is in and what role the noun is playing. And if you downloaded my cheat sheet, you saw that there can be several roles for nouns in a sentence. For instance, a noun could indicate a location, that would be one role. A noun can be a subject in a sentence and it can be an object in a sentence. By the way, it can be a direct object and an indirect object. But more about in this video lesson. Also, I remind you that if you didn't download my cheat sheet and if you have forgotten about these things from your school times, I encourage you to please download that cheat sheet because in that cheat sheet I am explaining in the English language the English grammar that in some ways goes in parallel with the Latvian language. Remembering the linguistic terms will help you to understand the Latvian language, that is, if you want to learn the Latvian language thoroughly and know how to make your own sentences. But now let's revise quickly what we learned yesterday so that we can play with making our own sentences afterwards. So these were the sentences. Otto dod roku Filipam. Philips dod roku Jānim. Jānis dod roku Mikum. And Mikus dod roku Otto. And just to remind you, the word dod means gives and the word roku means hand.
I will discuss the word ruaku later on some more, but now let's just quickly look at the change of endings of the names. So first we see that the default ending s in the word Philips has changed to the ending um. Similarly, we see that the default ending is in the word Janis has changed to the ending im. Also, we see that the default ending us in the name Mikus has changed to the ending um. And finally, we see that there is no change in the ending in the word Otto. And if you downloaded my cheat sheet and looked through it, you would know that the person who gives the hand in the sentence is the subject and the person to whom the hand is given in the sentence is the indirect object. And that is exactly why those endings in these words change. So whenever a masculine noun that has a default ending s is an indirect object in a sentence, it will have an ending um. And whenever a masculine noun that has a default ending is is an indirect object in a sentence, it will have an ending im. And similarly, whenever a masculine noun that in the default form has the ending us is an indirect object in a sentence, it will have an ending um. However, the words that have endings o will never change them. They will always remain o. That is why they don't belong to any declension. But now some more, as I promised, about the word ruaku. What kind of a noun is it if it has an ending o? Well, this is not the default form of that noun. The default form is ruaka. And it has changed its form because it is a direct object in this sentence. Therefore, whenever a feminine noun that has an ending a in its default form is a direct object in a sentence, it will have the ending u. All right, but now let's play. I'll give you other names and I'll give you another noun to play with. Other names, which will be subjects and interest objects in a sentence and another noun that will be the direct object in the sentence. So here's what we will be doing. We will be replacing some words in the previous sentences and we will play with the change of endings. If you truly want to be engaged, your task will be to change the endings accordingly. So let me first tell you what words I will be replacing. So I will replace the word ruaka, which means a hand or an arm, with the word nauda, which means money. And here are the four male names. First, Aldis. Second, Ingus. Third, Rodrigo. And fourth, Kaspars. And the first sentence that you will have to make is Aldis gives money to Ingus. The second sentence you have to make will be Ingus gives money to Rodrigo. The third sentence that you will have to make is Rodrigo gives money to Kaspars. And finally, the fourth sentence that you will have to make is Kaspars gives money to Aldis. I will also help you with this little chart. So what I encourage you to do is pause this video and get a pen and a paper for more fun. Then make those sentences. I will give you that slide again so that you remember what sentences you are supposed to make and you will also see the cheat chart. Resume playing after you have written your sentences. Then I will show you how those sentences should look and you can assess your results. Let's do it. Here is your slide. Once more pause the video and resume playing it once you have written all four sentences. Good luck! I'm sure that you did fantastic. And here is how those sentences should look. Aldis duod naudu ingum. Ingus duod naudu Rodrigo. 
Rodrigo dod naudu Kasparam. Kaspars dod naudu Aldim. All right, and that's all for this video lesson. I had only one little story today, but I think it was a good one. It was a story about hats and how we wear different hats in different situations. Just like Latvian nouns wear different endings depending on the case or on the situation or on the role that they are playing in that situation. I hope you understood this well. Please comment and tell me how you like this lesson and what you would like to learn. But now I'll say bye-bye, ata, till the next time.